Hello, this is Optimum Health for All. My name is OJ Odia. Today, in this episode, we will talk about cardiac device implantation. And we're going to the technical details. The reason is that it's important for those who already have pacemakers or do, uh, hoping to have pacemakers in the, who may have pacemakers in the future to understand how, uh, what, what a pacemaker does how is it inserted, what are the details of this insertion, and follow-up that is necessary to maintain these pacemakers and prevent them from having um, such complications as dislodgement, infections, and so on. So this is like a pacemaker clinic, as it were. So let us understand what pacemakers are all about. We have a special guest today. He's a cardiac physiologist, and I would like him to quickly introduce himself. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for having me on this episode. Uh, my name is Osobai Elvis. I'm a cardiac physiologist. I'm currently practicing in um, Abuja. Yeah. Yes. So, um, so pacemakers are simple um, devices that are implanted in um, usually on the left side, just under the skin by the cardiologist. And um, usually they're implanted for situations where the heart is going too slow. So when the heart starts going too slow, there's not enough circulation going around the body patient might start feeling symptoms you know sometimes they might even feel like they want to faint so when they come like that to the hospital they do routine tests to help detect what the issue is and once it has been detected and certified by the cardiologist that oh this patient will require a pacemaker we get you know set up for the procedure um so i work in the cat lab and i also work in the um, cardiac device clinic. So the first things first is to implant the device. And um, of course, the cardiologist is the one in charge who leads the team. So as a cardiac physiologist, we render assistance to the device, to the cardiologist while implanting because there are other things usually that they are focused on. They want to ensure that the device is properly implanted because this device might just be the lifesaver of that patient. There are patients who have been on devices for over 40 years. If not for those devices, they probably will have passed on or the quality of life will have really dropped. So they have to be sure that everything is on point so that um, the patient gets the best benefit out of that service. So why they are focused doing that? We are on our own side because we deal with the programming, the setup, and um, so, and we, we support by monitoring the patient's vitals um, in the process of implant. And then we also run checks, back checks on the device. Okay, they, they take for instance, uh, we had a case yesterday, I think that would help to explain better why we're implanting a pacemaker. It was yesterday or two days ago, but recently we're implanting a pacemaker for someone who had a condition called complete heart block. Now, while the consultant was, you know, putting in the leads, one of the wires that goes to the right ventricle, a patient went into a systole. A systole means the heart stopped beating. The heart stopped beating, yes. So we needed to immediately, if our wide the consultant was going in, we had set up in case that happens, it would just be one click away, and then we take up um, the heartbeat from there. So immediately we noticed that. Raise the alarm to the consultant because he's busy, you know, looking at ensuring that everything is going well. Oh, AC stole, and then we start pacing, and that was how we were able to, to kind of revive the patient immediately. And then 
the procedure continued until the whole fin was implanted and the patient walked out of the cath lab. So the implantation lab. is safe. Yes, very safe. Very safe. Very safe. So you are there to ensure that this safety is maintained. Correct. And also that the various parameters yes. are Yes, because there are many to parameters be. that we would assess and mm. ensure that oh this is optimal, optimal, optimal. You know, like a safety check. Yes. And this is optimal. And that in the long run will be of benefit to the patient mm. because those devices run on battery. Yes. And if those parameters are out of, you know, beyond um, the normal parameters that you should be there, maybe abnormal, it means it's going to tell on the lifespan of okay. the battery. So you ensure that everything is done and done properly. Yes. Now, what happens immediately after the pacemaker insertion? And uh, after that follow-up, how do we know that uh, this pacemaker is functioning well and so on? Yes. So because pacemakers are in quotes, or rather truly they are, they, they are, they are lifesavers, you know, and in, they improve life quality of life, it means, and these are devices, you know, we need to check them from time to time. And of course, now that it is now implanted in a human body and it has to do with the quality of life of that person or even the life of that person, that also needs to be checked up. So the normal thing we'll do is we, there's a routine that we follow. Um, that routine requires us, for instance, the next day after the implant or two days after, typically the next day, we should have a check and see that oh, everything is still intact because sometimes um, there could be that risk. It's not common. It's It happens, but it's not all the time. That's what I mean to say. So there could be that risk of maybe one of the wires that goes into the right ventricle or to the right atrium or the left ventricle maybe pulled out, for instance, or it's not somehow it has dislodged. As it has moved from the position where we it's initially to be. Mm -hmm. put it, at, and so and that would affect a lot of things. It could affect. So we do that check and ensure everything is still fine. And then going on from there, we um, six weeks after that, we do another check to see that because um, between the period of implant to about six weeks, the um, studies have been done, and then it shows that that is sufficient time for the the lead, the wire that we put inside to at least have some level of stability or healing around because we're going to just the minute screw, just something small, just put it to hook it into the muzzle of the heart. So that we have to ensure. So six weeks is the time we follow and then we check and see, oh, by then most of the parameters too would have stabilized. And then we can now optimize the device better, such that we, we get the maximum benefit, benefit from, from the device. Okay. Yes. So, so what after, can go wrong? Um, a lot With, can actually go wrong. Um, so maybe on follow up. On follow up. Mm. So um, some persons sometimes get lost to follow up for various reasons, um, but it's always good to have a follow up because it is reassuring one to the consultant that implanted the device because it's not just about implanting the device. It's about implanting a device and, of, and rendering care to the patient. And, um, you know, it's good to know that, oh, the patient implanted the device for five years ago. And it's still, still alive. Still alive and well. well and and all of that. Very important. So, um, but sometimes in some cases, there are situations where um, the lead might dislodge. Now, because the device is a small, is a small device that is implanted somewhere here. In some cases, it could move. You know, maybe due to, uh, for whatever reason, it could not. Certainly, due to patient activity. Activity, maybe, maybe as using the hand, swinging hand too yes. much, or whatever. And that you know, the, or playing Fun, around, it, yeah. playing around it, fondling around the area, it could move. Sometimes, it could also get infected. Some persons have, um, you know, my, by virtue of what they believe, might think, okay, uh, they just, you know, use any. So you don't, they should not uh, scratch on it, yes. they should not apply yes. medication, native medications, herbal medications, of whatever. Okay. So, because there will be a wound here, mm. a small wound, which, uh, 
which will be there and then before they leave the lab all of that is it is, is you know is sewn uh, sutured okay. and then we'll put the plaster on top of okay. it you know dress it well and keep it dry keep it neat but some press and that can that's only permanent it has to be done in every four or five days after so some persons might go somewhere else that they might not be very experienced and then they use certain materials that can can get infected contaminate the area yes. and then it gets infected and then you see pores you know inside the pocket the patient comes back there's a lot of issues around that place the whole device might have to even come out and that's that's not a good thing nobody wants that so um, follow-up is really important there's also that routine follow-up for wound check to ensure that all the place has healed properly yes it was sutured you know everybody's skin differs some persons might take some time some persons might be react reacting to something but when they come around to you know centers that they have the skill open it up and look at it and see how it's healing according to as we would expect you to and that's fine put another dress on until when the place is fully healed up, well opposed, and then there's no risk of exposure of um, infection. Then take it off, and you know there's a way to also have your. You don't we, generally we don't want water around that place because it could cause it to be infected. So keeping it dry, even if they, they have to shower, they, as they see, you see, just wash other areas and ensure that place remains dry all the time until when it is certified that yes, you can now fully have a full shower so that in fact because infection if imagine somebody who's dependent on the pacemaker gets the pacemaker infected you know it means that whole device all the money the effort everything spent on that is likely going to go down the drain and then we start afresh okay. again with another maybe put a temporary pacemaker and maybe it's and then come that to location this other side, and from my you know, so it's is nobody not even the doctor they don't want that so it's very very important so you, you do advise the patient before they yes. go when they go home patient education don't do this don't do that yes, we always and give our patients educate, well, educate them on the things to do and the things not to do and then you know so that they can um, you know come out well as a whole thing we so, go over without complications so patients you know some of them are saying oh they have a patient account they cannot do much anymore they can still do the normal chores in, in the house isn't it yes they can, they can their drive life. yes we advise them mm -hmm. to live their normal life. normal life as much as possible yes as much okay as thank you very much thank you very 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 much thank you now um what other advice would you give you know to patients who have let's say they have reading problems let's say the heart is too slow and they have to they are usually afraid they don't know what's going to happen they say go and put a pacemaker they are scared okay. should they really be scared well, i don't think they should be scared because um We've seen a lot of patients who have these devices yeah. and they are doing well. They are benefiting. They are benefiting well. The okay. quality of life, in fact, some of them, especially when the, the symptoms just started happening and then they immediately, you know, agreed to get a pacemaker, you see that sigh of relief like, oh, I am, I feel much more much better, better now than, before. than a few weeks ago. I, you know, they can tell you the difference. You can see it on their look. You can see it on the activity they are a lot much better they themselves will tell you that oh i'm i'm okay i feel alive now you know you see that joy and that's for us is like and that is it's, it's a, yes we that's a good uh, reward for us like okay. yes thank you very much thank um, you very much sir i think you have helped us a lot thank you sir and we've helped our viewers i'm i'm sure our viewers have uh, benefited a lot from what I you believe, said sir. i hope so too. and Hope you'll come again some other time sure, to sir. educate us. Talk to our viewers. Viewers, thank you for viewing this uh, episode of Optimal Health for All. Please subscribe to this channel. Share these videos as widely as possible. Thank you. Bye for now.
bomb, got to brain Everything aligned, when you live that good life, it's a powerful sign Power with the mission, got the vision on deck Cut the stress, no mess, keep the wellness in check And we thrive, we shine, with every routine Optimum health, you know what I mean Optimum health for all